Welcome to using Ansible Playbooks. In this lesson, you'll learn how to create manifest files to push the desired state to the managed systems. You'll first learn about YAML and how it is used to build playbooks. Next, I'll guide you through writing and running your first playbook. You'll learn how to run them and how to deal with errors. And you'll also learn how to run playbooks with Ansible Navigator. At the end of this lesson, you'll find a lab in which we work on a small case where you are going to automate setting up web servers. In this lesson, we are going to explore playbook structure. But first, why would you ever want to use playbooks? Well, Ansible playbooks are used to run multiple tasks against managed hosts in a scripted way. And they describe the desired state, and that is compared to the current state that was found on the managed host. In playbooks, different advanced Ansible features can be used. And in playbooks, one or multiple plays can be started. Each play runs a couple of tasks, and in the tasks, modules are used to perform the actual work. So there's a one-on-one -on -one relation between a task and a module. For every single task, there's a module required. Playbooks are written in YAML, and they may have the YML or YAML extension. Both will work in an Ansible environment, even if YML is a bit more common. Now, YAML is a key element in writing playbooks. So how is it organized? Well, it is an easy to read format uh, that is used to structure tasks or items that need to be created. And in YAML files, items are using indentation. And for the indentation, you must use spaces. No tabs are allowed. And the indentation indicates the structure of the data. Data elements at the same level should have the same indentation. And child elements are indented more than the parent items. And that clearly indicates how the relation between the different items is organized. There is no strict requirement about the number of spaces that should be used, but two is very common. Now, when you are developing a playbook, it is good to have a playbook development strategy. So how does that work? Well, particularly for bigger playbooks, you should start by designing the workflow procedure in the playbook. That depends that you need to figure out what is going first, what is going after that, and how are the dependencies organized. And to avoid having to think about specific modules, at this point you should use the debug module with a message argument to describe what needs to be done in this task. And after defining the generic structure of the playbook, focus on specific modules and their arguments. Let me give you an example in which I can show you the development strategy as well as the organization of a playbook. So let's create a playbook with the name example.yml. In a playbook, it's common to start with three hyphens. That's just indicating the start of the playbook. Then you have a name, and the name is behind a hyphen. The hyphen indicates a list uh, element. A list element is uh, really an array, and you can have multiple items uh, in a list. A playbook is called a playbook uh, because you can have more than one place. Uh, let's call it, this is play one. Uh, then we have hosts. So hosts is how you define where the play needs to be executed. And you might as well use local host uh, to execute it on local host. If it's for testing only, it makes no sense to reach out to external host and uh, cause a lot of network traffic. And then you would get the tasks. Tasks is plural, and in Ansible you will notice that very frequently, if an element is plural, a list is followed. And that is exactly what is happening. Uh, list is going to follow uh, with the name of uh, the task that you are going to run. So this is task one. Now in the development strategy, I would use the debug module. And the debug module can use a message argument. Now a message is an argument, which means that in YAML it is organized as a child element to debug. So message, this is message one. Let's keep it very simple. Then in the playbook we can continue with multiple tasks and name this is task two and debug and again message uh, this is message two. A playbook is called the playbook because you can have more than one play and that's what I want to, uh, to write here. So let's get all the way to the left and write the second play. This is play two. Still executed on host, localhost. 
Uh, where you can see by the way that every single play needs to have an identification of the hosts where it runs. And tasks and in the tasks let's just do one, this is task, uh, task 3 and debug is printing the message, this is message 3. Now this isn't a very useful playbook of course, but it's uh, hopefully a nice demo that illustrates the structure of a playbook. So uh, the purpose here, and this is also the purpose in your development strategy, is to write a playbook that runs. Well that should be the case. Uh, let's use Ansible playbook on example.yaml to see if it runs. And there we can see play uh, this, uh, play one, uh, we, have get, uh, we have gather facts. Fact gathering is normal in a playbook, we'll talk about it later. And it takes a little bit of time. You might want to shut that off, which is also possible and not that hard. But for now let's not worry about the fact gathering, uh, let's wait for this fact gathering to complete. There you can see that uh, the task 1 is running, task 2 is running and play 2 is running and oh no, there we have uh, fact gathering as well. Now in case you are wondering why are we wasting so, many, so much time, well fact gathering is discovering properties of your managed host that you can later use in conditionals. And now the playbook is done. And that illustrates how to develop a simple playbook. So now let's talk about uh, the way how you run playbooks. So you use the Ansible playbook command, followed by the name of your playbook. Or you can use Ansible navigator run, followed by the name of your playbook. Depends on which utility you want to use. A successful run uh, needs a functional ansible.cfg and an inventory file to be available. As an alternative, required options can be provided as command line arguments as well. So without an inventory file, like the way we have done it in the beginning of this course, uh, you can run your commands with many command line options. The output of the Ansible playbook command will show a summary of what has happened. And if you want to see more about what has happened, better use Ansible Navigator, where you can select every single line of the output to get more details. One thing is very important to realize, there is no easy way to undo changes that are made by a playbook. So let's uh, run this uh, sample playbook that we created just before uh, again and focus a little bit more on the different elements. So before running our example playbook again, uh, there's one thing that I want to do and that is in the play header. I am going to use gather facts. No, for the simple reason that fact gathering is not needed and it takes a lot of time. So let's run this playbook again, Ansible playbook on example.yaml. And as you can see now it is giving an instantaneous result. Uh, so what do we see? Uh, we see a description of the play, we see a description of the task, where the name that is used for the play and the task is, uh, is printed. Then we see the result of the actual, uh, the actual module. So the module is debug and debug is printing a string, this is message one and that is how it continues. Uh, also important is the player recap, because the player recap is uh, the summary of what has happened. What you should be seeing is OK or changed. OK means that the state that is defined in the playbook was already found on the managed host. Or otherwise it means that no changes have been applied to the managed host. And changed means that the managed host had a different state and the playbook has uh, applied the state. Unreachable is what you get if you are trying to contact the host, which is an in inventory, uh, but it could not be reached. And failed is what you get when a play is failing. We will talk about the other options later because they are more specific. As we have seen before, you can also use Ansible Navigator. So Ansible Navigator run example.yaml is doing more or less the same, but here we see this menu interface. And the menu interface in Ansible Navigator allows you to investigate what is going on. So every line uh, in the Ansible Navigator interface is a number. Enter this number if you want to see more details about the line. So this is line number, uh, number zero, line number one. And as you can see, we get a lot of details about the play execution. 
Now I will later show you that the Ansible playbook can show you uh, more information as well, but that information is so overwhelming. Uh, in fact, you might like the amount of detail that is printed by Ansible Navigator more. Don't forget, to get out of Ansible Navigator, you press escape until you see your prompt again. So when you are running a playbook, tasks are executed and errors may occur. It's important that you understand what is going to happen if an error occurs. If playback syntax has an error, uh, the playbook will not run at all and you will be notified. So you can check and correct the error before you are going to run the playbook. If the playbook syntax is correct, specific tasks may still result in an error. And if the error is not uh, syntax oriented, but task oriented, then the task cannot run successfully and further execution of the entire play on the failing host is stopped. That's a serious condition and that's a condition that you might want to avoid. Now, if you don't want your playbook to stop if an error occurs, you, are, you can use ignore errors true in the play header uh, or in the task. Let me show you. So let me create with, with error. Not YML. I want to show you two different errors, so I'm going to write something that is terrible. And I like writing it so that you can get some practice in developing your own uh, playbooks. So let's call this error demo. Uh, so hosts, that should be Ansible 1. And uh, tasks. And here we are going to use uh, name. Uh, copy a file. And then we use copy. And in copy, I need, uh, I need a couple of properties. So what do I want to copy? I want to copy the source uh, TMP hello to the destination slash TMP. The problem is that I don't have a file TMP hello. So that is a logical error. I also want to put in a syntax error. So name uh, showing syntax error. And there I'm using debug, and debug has message set to this is a syntax error. And just to make sure that we can see the progress of the playbook, uh, next I'm going to use name running this in debug and message uh, running this. So the purpose of this playbook is to run it and see if we are going to reach the third task at all. So let's give it a try. Ansible playbook with error is uh, what I want. And uh oh, what do I get? I get a syntax error. And the syntax error uh, happens in the debug. Well, I'm very aware of that because I created it on purpose. We have an indentation error. The interesting thing is that apparently Ansible first checks for uh, any syntax errors uh, before uh, evaluating what it needs to do. And that kind of makes sense. So let's take away the syntax error. And also let's keep three spaces in front of the message here and two spaces in front of the message here to investigate if you need to be consequent in the indentation of the child elements. So running it again. And what do we see? Oh, we see gathering facts. I'm not sure I like that because it takes time, but we see that it is working. So what do we see? We see a uh, task copy a file. And task copy a file is giving us uh, could not find or access TMP hello. So what are we going to do about that? Well, there's two things that I want to do. First, I want to go to ansible.cfg and in ansible.cfg, I want to put gather facts is no. Why would I gather facts by default if most of my playbooks don't use them? Next, I'm going in my uh, playbook. And in the playbook code, I am going to put uh, the line uh, ignore errors true. Because uh, that should show us the difference and uh, it should help us to get beyond the very first error in the very first task. But we have just seen, if a task has an error, uh, further play execution will stop on that specific host. If other hosts are involved, then it will continue, but that's not the case here. 
Oh boy, and what do we see? We see that gather facts no uh, didn't have any effect. Well, let's have a look at that later and focus on the error output of this playbook now. So as you can see, copy, uh, copy a file. This time we have ignoring. And then we get uh, showing syntax error. Did I have a syntax error here? I don't have a syntax error, but hey, that doesn't matter. It's printing the debug message. It's printing the other debug message as well. And it's showing in the result that it has ignored uh, one error. Ignore errors is pretty powerful if you want to make sure that your playbook continues, even if you have an error. Uh, now, we might also fix the error, then we don't need it anymore. But there's one thing that I wanted to discuss with you, and that's the indentation of the message here. Because here, the argument to the debug module is indented with three spaces. And in the next task, the argument to the debug module is indented with two spaces. Now, the thing is that the indentation is only relevant within uh, child elements of a specific parent element. So all the same, uh, all the children of the same parent need the same indentation for other parents. Well, these parents do with their children whatever they want. And hey, just one thing, gather facts uh, false. Let's play, put it in a play uh, in the play header and uh, run it again. And now it's not gathering facts anymore. So you have just seen how to run uh, playbooks with Ansible Playbook. Let's also have a close look at how to run playbooks with Ansible Navigator. So Ansible Navigator uh, takes the run argument. And maybe you want to specify some command line options depending on your Ansible Navigator configuration. So minus M standard out if you want to print the result to the standard output instead of opening the TUI. And minus PP never uh, if you have not provided this option uh, in the Ansible configuration. Uh, minus PP is for the pull policy, uh, by the way. And never will never look for newer container images, which does assume that you do have container images locally available already. Uh, so let's, uh, let's check it out and uh, see how we can use the numbers in the output to get more information about the different steps. So Ansible Navigator uh, minus M standard out of example.yaml. Uh, that should do it. And as you can see, oh boy, uh, what do we have? We have an invalid choice. Uh, why do we have an invalid choice? Because uh, we need a command. You know, if you've always used Ansible Playbook without a run, then it's kind of uh, new to use Ansible Navigator with the run command. So let's put a run in front of the example.yaml. And there you can see that uh, the output is printed on your screen. So this is the Ansible Playbook compatibility mode. It looks very much like the Ansible Playbook command. Uh, if you omit the minus M standard out, uh, then you get all the output in the text user interface and you can investigate in more detail what is going on. We are now at the end of this lesson. Let's do a lab. In this lab, you are going to use uh, a playbook to deploy a web server. So write a playbook that deploys the HTTPD web server. I would say focus on just one distribution family. You don't have to, uh, to write it for Ubuntu as well as Red Hat family. That would make it unnecessarily complicated. But do make sure you meet the following requirements. The web server is installed, started and enabled. The firewall allows access. And an index HTML file containing the text hello world is copied to var www.html. 